Kia ora and welcome on into the Kiwi Football Fix. Happy New Year to you wherever you are, wherever you've been throughout this holiday period. I hope you've been doing it well and enjoying all of the sunshine that Aotearoa has to offer. Back in the new year for the KFF, what have we got to look forward to in this episode? Well, we go to Australia not once, but twice. On our second visit, we've got Hannah Wilkinson, Football Ferns and Melbourne City FC striker. And boy, is she putting away the goals. Eight in her last three. We'll talk about that and her Football Ferns prospects. But before we do that, let's check in with Wellington Phoenix men's head coach, Ufuk Tele. Ufi, great to have you on the show. Thanks. Very good, mate. Good as can be in the current situation. Yeah, look, uh, you know, I'd love to see you guys playing football and I'm sure you'd love to, to coach the lads and, and see them uh, reverse that, that current trend of four losses on the bounce. But health and safety of the players and the coaching staff, it's paramount, isn't it, Ufuk? So first and foremost, let's talk about the COVID cases that you've had in camp recently and, and how is everybody doing? Yeah, everyone's doing doing good. Uh, you know, the symptoms have been very uh, mild with the players, which is which is a positive for us. Uh, we'll slowly get players out uh, day by day, and hopefully by the end of this weekend, we'll have uh, everyone available to to start training again. So, look, it's the situation that we're in. It's one we don't want to be in. But uh, you know, like you said, the most important things is is the safety and then the health of of our players and staff. This must be really testing you as a head coach, Fuktala. You may not have seen this before uh, <laughs> in your coaching history. How on earth do you? Um managed to put together a, a, a clinic or a training regime for five players? Yeah, look, uh, you know, for five players, it's not easy because whatever you do is always going to be small-sided and, and quite explosive. So, you know, the fir first day we, we had a bit of fun with them with the ball and then the second day we, we put, sort of like had a skill session with them where, you know, with five players uh, doing a full session will take too much out of them. Uh, we're trying to like maintain their loads, like I said, at the same time so they don't drop their loads when we don't have all, all the squad on the park. And so when do we expect to get uh, some, if not all, of these players back in your possession? Hopefully hopefully by uh, Sunday this weekend, everyone will be available to, to come out and, uh, and train. Uh, although, you know, most of these boys will be modified in what they do. Uh, you know, we had some uh, come out today and, and, and the next couple of days we'll have a few more coming out and slowly we'll get to the full squad by the end of the weekend. But in saying that, those guys that come out on Sunday will be uh, totally doing a totally different session to, to the boys that have come out earlier. Well, on behalf of everybody here at the Kiwi Football Fix, we wish everybody a, a speedy recovery indeed. What, what this Thanks. has done, Uffi, is it's absolutely decimated the schedule. I don't know when we're supposed to see the Wellington Phoenix play again. Have you got any handle on that at all? When will your men uh, take to the fields in the A-League again? I think the APL at the moment is going through the scheduling. Uh, there's been a lot of games that have been postponed so far. Uh, I think they're working around of, of how they can fit in all these games that have been postponed. Uh, at this stage, I think our first game could possibly be the FA Cup against Melbourne Victory on the 22nd. Uh, it hasn't been uh, confirmed as yet, but I think that's, that'll be the, our first game uh, once we get everybody back. I got quite excited as a Phoenix fan late last year when we thought that we might be able to get Phoenix games back in New Zealand, be it in Wellington inside the Cape Turn or maybe at Eden Park once again. What has all of this done to those possibilities? Are we looking at the prospect of the Wellington Phoenix playing out the rest of the A-League season in Australia now? I believe we'll be here for the rest of the season. The the, the thing last year was, was good. We got back uh, towards the back end of the season, played a couple of games, and obviously things changed with COVID again uh, very rapidly. Uh, at the start of this season, I think there was a bit of glimmer and hope that at some stage we would return back to Wellington and play at home. But honestly, I can't really uh, see that happening uh, this season at all, which I think makes it the second season probably a lot more challenging than, than what it was the first season because the first season we knew that we were going to be based in, in Australia for the entire season. Uh, like I said, this year we had hope that we would be coming back and, and playing at home in front of our own fans and, and, and the boys sleeping in their own beds at home. But uh, that's why I think this, this year has been a little bit more challenging in the sense that you know, the hope was there, but I think that's uh, that's distinguished pretty quickly. You mentioned the FFA Cup. That might be the first game back on the 22nd up against Melbourne Victory. The, the results in the, in the league have been one thing, but in the FFA Cup, you guys have done a splendid job. This is your best ever run. What do you put it down to? 
Oh, look, uh, the thing is, like I said, we, we have a young group and we've had a bit of inconsistency uh, this year where we played a, a, a good game and then we've played uh, a game not as well as we, we, we would have liked. Uh, the Cup game is a one-off, uh, you know, tournament. So you go and you win, you continue. And, uh, you know, we, we've been fortunate. We, we played all the young boys in our first game against Western United and, and ended up getting a good result. And then, you know, we had Avondale, which was an NPL club uh, that we played and, and, you know, we won that game. And now, uh, you know, we, we've come this far and the boys want to continue you know, uh, to, to, you know, at the end of the day, we, we in the next game, you're in a final and you can win a trophy. And when it comes to the, the A-League, again, look, you know, we're, we've played six games and we've got four points. Uh, that's all, that's three more points than what we had in my first season at the club uh, after round six. So we're not we're not too far off. Uh, and like I said, we've got a couple of players coming in. We'll hopefully to, to build that consistency within the group and, and push as far as we can go. Let's talk about a couple of those guys who are coming in. I feel like... I've been talking about and I've been hearing about Gael Sandoval for 10 years now and uh, he hasn't made his debut yet. Obviously, we're waiting for January 14 or 15 to occur and then he can finally take to the field for the black and yellow. But you would have had a, a pretty good close-up look at him for quite some time now, Uffi. Why should we be excited about this guy in black and yellow? Yeah, look, uh, Gail's been with us for a few weeks now, which has been great uh, to get him in early uh, with a group and to train with a group and get to know the boys and, and understand the way that we want to want to play the game. Uh, look, we're excited to to see him. Look, we have, we've, we've done an internal game with him so far. Uh, when, uh, when everyone was available, we did an internal game. It was nice to see him in there. And, and look, slowly we need to build him up to match fitness as well. So, look, for us, he's a, he's a creative player. He, he, uh, hopefully, you know, he can assist uh, with goals and score goals and, and give us that, uh, you know, that experience that, uh, you know, we're, we're lacking a little bit in the front third. So, for us, we're very excited to, to you know, be able to finally get him on the park and, and hopefully, you know, he has a successful uh, season with us. Yeah, and hopefully he has a massive impact on the attacking third. That's one end of the field, but... Down the other end, we've been shipping a few goals in the league. I think it's 12 in the last four games. Hopefully, the acquisition of Scott Wooten will certainly shore up things in the defensive line. Can you tell us how long you've been in discussions with the former Manchester United Academy man? Yeah, look, we, we, he was sent to us uh, a while ago. We, we had a look at him. Uh, we're in the decision-making phase of, you know, what, what we needed. Uh, you know, for me, I wanted to give opportunities to our to our younger players in the, in, in the sense like Payne is not that young, but, you know, this has been his third season with us at this level and, and Josh Laws is a younger player. And, you know, we we, uh, we loaned out Bozanowski from uh, Melbourne Victory and we got Finn Sermon from our academy. So it was one of those ones where we do we go with a, with a younger, younger back. Uh, but you know, then we thought we we probably need we need a little bit more experience, uh, and and Scotty fit that fit that for us. So for us, look, he's, he's an important player. I think he's gonna uh, once he gets here, we can uh, we can rely on his experience and to help those younger players within the game as well. And I think that's something that we lacked, and that's why we're down that path. Another positive headache, a good headache to have, is Alex Paulson coming in and playing really well in goal. And we've been blessed in the last couple of years in black and yellow, haven't we? Because we had Marinovic versus Sale, and Sale won out, and Marinovic had to go offshore. And now we've got this young kid, Alex Paulson, coming through. You must be really pleased with what you're seeing. Yeah, look, for me, the, the keepers have, have been good uh, in my time at Wellington Phoenix. Uh, also, I've got to mention that you know Paul Paul Gothard has done a fantastic job with with the keepers and bringing them up to speed and bringing Alex up to speed very quickly as well. You know, Alex has been fortunate enough. We're playing with the academy, uh, you know, in the New Zealand competition, playing against men the last couple couple of seasons, which has helped his development as well. Look, for me, we, we, we've got, uh, you know, I think we've got an abundance of talent, a lot of talented players within within our squad that are, that are quite young. Uh, what we need to do is obviously, uh, you know, filter them with uh, with some experienced players around them to, to help them get through the games. So for me, it's been positive. I think uh, Alex is uh, a, a very good kid, for, first and foremost, and I think he's going to be, uh, exceptional goalkeeper. I want to go from one Alex to another now because Alex Roofer is the club captain and uh, I think it was a, a month or so back um, myself, Jacob Spoonley and Harry Nata were having a discussion about whether it's right or wrong to take a, a skipper off a, at the half time marker or with 30 minutes to go. Now I'm not going to ask you, you know, the pros and cons or anything like that. I just want to know what are the things that you consider when you take <clears throat> the skipper from the field? Uh, look for me. Uh, I, it doesn't. Uh, I don't look at who's got the armband on. 
I look at uh, what what they're giving uh, the team at that time. Uh, and for me, for me, if doesn't matter whether they got the armband or not, if they're not giving what I need and what I believe the team needs at that time, and if I need to make a tactical change, I'll make a tactical change uh, regardless of whoever it is. Uh, for me, it was one of those times where I need to make a little bit of a statement to the players. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are. Uh, at the end of the day, I have a certain expectation within each position of the field and I have a certain expectation of the player delivering uh, what I ask of them and what I what, what we implement the training to to, to to implement with it in the game. So if we're not uh, getting, if I believe I'm not getting what I want and that's the outcome, the best outcome for the team, uh, if I need to make changes, I'll always make changes. Has it made all the more difficult, Uffi, that you're, you're down on experience and leadership? Yeah, look, it's it's look like I said, we've got. We, I think we're a very talented group. I think we've got some very good, talented young players within the group. Uh, it makes it obviously difficult to sometimes get through through games without that experience. And and when I say experience, it's more so obviously games, the amount of games these boys have played at this level. Uh, and like I said, hopefully now you know we got we got hoops back as well. Uh, Borley will be there. We've got Sal Naval coming in. We've got Wooten coming in. Will you know will give us a bit more experience with the group. 2022 is a pretty important year for New Zealand football. There's a World Cup at the end of it, don't you know? And uh, obviously in the Wellington Phoenix squad, you've got a number of players who would be desperate to appear at the World Cup or in the Intercontinental Playoff or possibly in the March qualifiers against the other Oceania teams. Now, what conversations have you had with Danny Hay about releasing players for that window and indeed... Uh, later this month, early in February as well, against uh, Jordan and Uzbekistan. There are those games that allegedly are open to A-League players. Uh, how, how far along the line are we in terms of possibly releasing players or withholding them from the national side? Yeah, look, I don't want to withhold anybody from representing their country. Uh, at the end of the day, I think it's always an honour. Uh, it doesn't matter at what level to represent your country. Uh, we, I think we'll have a couple of players uh, most likely uh, in this uh, this January February window that might go away. Uh, in March, I know the qualifiers uh, are currently the, there's there, there's a, there's a few games outside the window, the FIFA window, and then there's there's a few games within the FIFA window. And I think Danny's trying to work out ways of of how to best uh, utilize the players we current currently with us, and obviously the players overseas. So the discussions are there. Uh, I think it's got to suit um, both parties at the same time. I, I look for me, I, I'd all New Zealand to to qualify for a World Cup because. I think uh, it's great exposure for especially our players that get selected to, to go and play at that level. Uh, it's a great experience and also like a great honour. But look, the discussions will be there on, on how we can make it best work for both uh, you know, in club land and also for the national team. Just lastly, before I let you go, Orfa, um, mate, you've done a lot as a, as a player and as a coach, but is this the toughest gig at the moment, <laughs> being head coach of the Wellington Phoenix in these COVID times? Yeah, I think uh, look, I think this has been probably the most challenging uh, last two seasons. Even the the back end of my uh, first season, you know, being based in uh, in a hotel for nine weeks and, and trying to get the the best out of players. And like I said, my job is to to try to get the best out of these guys to to perform at the at, at their peak. Uh, has it been challenging? Yes, yes, it has been challenging. Uh, we've had some players the first time, especially our younger boys that we brought in from our academy that have been away for their families for the first time during Christmas. So it was a different experience for them and, you know, try to get these boys focused on, on the task at hand. And look, uh, they're doing something that they love. I'm doing something that I love, you know. Uh, I can't run around as much as the boys anymore, so I get my football fix on trying to help these players achieve their dreams. Awesome. Well, look, whenever it happens, when you take back to the field, uh, I hope that you can turn around that four-match losing streak in the league and in the FFA Cup, go one better and make that final and finally get your hands on some silverware for the black and yellow Wellington Phoenix. So, Fuktel, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the Kiwi Football Fix. Hope it isn't uh, too far down the line that we get you back on again soon. Thank you very much. Pleasure. All right, and staying in Australia, we actually go from one A-League to the other, men's to women's, and it's a great pleasure and privilege to welcome into the Kiwi Football Fix for the second time in our history, the Melbourne City striker, Football Ferns centurion, Hannah Wilkinson. Hannah, great to see you again. Good to see you. So good to see you. And look at you. I think last time we spoke, it was in the, the dark, dingy, miserable surrounds of Duisburg, Germany. And 
brilliant sunshine. Here we are in Melbourne. Yep, quite a quite a contrast from the last time we spoke for sure. Um, I'm back to the side of the world, the better side of the world now. So, um, yep, it's it feels good, and I'm I'm taking advantage of the sun any any chance I get after all these quarantines. I think the sun may have revitalised you a little bit because your German experience probably wasn't the best, but. I'll tell you what, the way you've started off with Melbourne City, you've been on fire. I, I called you a striker, but, I mean, you are a striker in every sense of the word. Eight goals in your last three games. Can you tell us the secrets? Uh, why are you so <laughs> prolific in front of goal all of a sudden? I, I guess it's like the first time I've had some consistency in a while. Um, you know, I've had no, um, you know, I've had consistent 90-minute games on a Really, I will say a very, very good team. Um, no injuries, knock on wood. Um, and, um, you know, just to get away from the, the constant quarantines as well has been like a, a huge help. But, yeah, I think what I can say is it's just it's just consistency for me, I think, that's worked. Yeah, and it's worked an absolute treat. Five goals in that Melbourne derby. Uh, Melbourne victory won't want to see you again anytime soon, Hannah. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you talk us through it? What was it like? Because in 26 minutes you'd picked up a hat trick, but the goals kept coming. What was it like? Did you feel invincible and in that you just could not miss? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just one of those games where everything kind of was going right. You know, our team, we were just playing so well together. We were so cohesive. We were all on the same page. We knew what we had to do. We came off, you know, we were coming off a loss against victory. We absolutely had to beat them. Um, you know, to be honest, I think collectively we all wanted to thrash them. So, <laughs> and that just showed, <laughs> you know. And so I guess it was a collective mindset where, like, you know, even if we score, we just, it doesn't matter. It's nil nil, keep playing, keep scoring. So I think that's just what happened. And, and it was the perfect performance for us. Hanny, you spoke about the cohesion that Melbourne City has, and, and it's a team that knows full well what it's trying to achieve on the field. That was something that was missing in Germany with Duisburg. So you can, they were almost poles apart, the, the two experiences, right? Absolutely. Like you, could, you can see the difference there. Um, you know, I think with Duisburg, I think, you, you know, towards the end of the season, you know, I was only there for a short period of time. Um, and towards the end, you could kind of see some things coming together, but it just goes to show it can take a long time to really get on the same page. Whereas here at City... Uh, I think our leadership is fantastic. You know, our coach is terrific. It's very professional. Um, and there's, it's a group of girls that know, we all kind of know what we want and we all work together. There's no language barrier. You know, it's it's all very just connected and you can really see the difference there. Yeah, it seems like things have basically flipped 180, Hannah. You know, in Melbourne, you've got the sun on your back versus the cold, the doom and gloom in Germany. You've got a team that's cohesive in Melbourne versus whatever was happening in Germany. You're also very close to home, a three-hour flight when we're allowed to fly around uh, Australasia. Um, you can get back home, hopefully. Uh, you've got familiar faces as well. New Zealand is in your team. So I suppose it all adds up and, and contributes to you performing well. Yeah, it definitely does, absolutely. Being in you know such a familiar environment, um, it feels really great to be close to home again. Um, and just, I think, all being on the same page, same language, everything, it definitely adds up for sure. And But I can't, like, I have to, like, kind of uh, remember that all the overseas experiences I've had have certainly, um, you know, allowed me, me to become the player that I am. And so, you know, it all just shows all the experience overseas, the tough um, experiences and, um, you know, you have to learn to play at a very, very high level and deal with a lot of, adversity and, and so it, it kind of shows um, when I come back this side and uh, yeah I'm just grateful for the for the journey I've, I've taken. Yeah I mean I suppose everything contributes right everything dictates or, or contributes to the person you are today so you go through those difficult times in Europe or wherever you are in the world and then when you come back home and everything clicks and so everything has actually it's basically mm. like stepping stones eh? Yeah definitely like for sure, you know, um, I can't like express enough how amazing it is to play on such a consistently performing team as well and, and being playing for 90 minutes, you know, consistently as well. So that's one thing that was a struggle for me overseas, kind of paired with all my injuries is, is just the, 
um, you know, struggling to get consistent game time all the time, it, it doesn't help. And so when, you know, now I'm back stronger from all my, my, all my injuries and, um, yeah, playing consistently with a really good team, like I said, it just it all has really come together. I feel like I may have cursed you, Hannah. You're talking about how well you're going <laughs> and injury-free. I'm going to feel awful if um, you go out there and injure yourself in the next game. So please don't do that. No, no way. I'm, I'm definitely the most paranoid about that uh, after what I've been through. So don't worry about that. Okay. All right. Hey, you managed to um, pick up another goal, this time up against the Wellington Phoenix women's side. Now, we've been trying for, I think it's more than a decade, to lobby FFA or the A-League to have a New Zealand women's team in this professional competition. What was it like to come up against them for the first time? Oh, it was, it was awesome. You know, to be honest, I, I think we were actually pretty shocked um, by their pressure and, and how I think we really underestimated them collectively moving into that game because uh, they are a young squad, you know, um, and they they really had us going there for the first half. You know, they, they put on a ton of pressure. It reminded me of, you know, the kind of strength and um, kind of uh, – you know, the way that Kiwis like to play. They did beat us up quite a lot as well, you know, so it was good to see. And there's certainly a lot of potential there. They are creating uh, a few chances there. Um, you know, they just have to become a little bit more clinical um, because they, they did have some chances against us. And I think sometimes we were lucky. Um, but, you know, it's just going to take, you know, a few more seasons, I guess, just to kind of get that um, club sort of, you know, it's always the first season was always going to be tough. It is a really young group and they're still developing. But, you know, there's some exciting players there and it's going to become something really, really special. Yeah, who, who did you like the look of, Hannah? You would have been up close and personal with a number of those players throughout the, the 90 minutes. I'm thinking about the likes of Mackenzie Barry and Kate Taylor in the heart of the Phoenix defence. Who, who did you like the look of? Um, you know... Obviously, I I kind of uh, had to be wary of Lily, the, the goalie, you know, because she's she's an incredible keeper. She's always like shown, you know, a lot of strength. So I actually had to kind of like be right. I, she's she's good. I gotta take care of my my chances in front of goal. Um, you know, Mackenzie Barry was always you know kind of a tough opponent um, to come up against. I think, you know, there are small kind of errors that they sort of seem to make that are really easily fixed, you know, fixable, um, which is good, you know, because you can see the intentions in a lot of these players. I think Chloe Knott played really well up front, putting on a lot of pressure on, on our back line, won the ball a couple of times. Um, and their speed to get in behind, you know, to their counterattack speed was, uh, you know, improving as well, like throughout the game as well. So, I mean, like I said, it's it's just, you can see that it's just, going to take them some time to get you know better and better but you can see the potential there in a lot of those players for sure. Um, how's the guitar playing going and I'm, I'm assuming that you're actually playing uh, happier chirpier sort of music now that you've got these brilliant conditions as opposed to maybe the, the sadness and the melancholy that uh, probably came with the German environment. Yep. Uh, it's definitely a lot more Jack Johnson than Kurt Cobain, I would say, <laughs> out here in the sun. Um, yeah, there's, I got a nice little scoop of stairs there that I sit in the sun and just have little jams here and there. But, yeah, it's just great, you know, like, it's so chill. It, it really does match the kind of person I am, this this environment. So it's just it feels really good to to be back in the southern hemisphere in the beautiful summer and playing beautiful football. Great to see you so smile, Hannah. <laughs> great to see you smile <laughs> and great to see you banging in those goals for Melbourne City. Continue that great work and we hope to catch you again soon on the Kiwi Football Fix. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. No problem at all. And that about wraps things up here on the Kiwi Football Fix. I'm about to drive home and maybe I'll listen to some Nirvana. I don't know. Or I'll check on some Jack Johnson. Uh, I don't know when the Wellington Phoenix men's side are playing next. Uffy told us that um, it might be the weekend after next, we'll have to wait and see. But I can tell you that the women's side, the Wellington Phoenix women, play Brisbane Raw on Sunday at 6pm. Check that out live on Sky Sport. My thanks to Uffi, my thanks to Hannah, and my thanks to you for watching the very first episode of the Kiwi Football Fix in 2022. 
We'll catch you next time.